up your YouTube, search for Stupid Meadows, watch on your big screen. Or another device if you're at home. Get yourself comfy, this could take a while. What a happy scene. Something new every day for your long term memory. This is so exciting, it is nearly time for a stupidly assembly. Hello there everyone and welcome to today's curriculum assembly. You know what I'm going to say? For each other we, every day we, to improve we, and together we will. And our everyday focuses are, and our Stukely motto is, and our Stukely curriculum is, and of course those four words. Well here we are, another curriculum assembly and another expert assembly. Now I, in the interest of being completely upfront and honest, I don't actually have an expert for today's expert assembly, but that doesn't mean that we're not going to talk about what it means um, to be an expert in something and what the kind of secrets are to expertise. So we are going to actually get some expert tips, even though we don't have an expert. It will all become clear, or I hope it will anyway. So here we are today. Now, when I was thinking about this curriculum assembly and the fact that we don't actually kind of have an expert, it did make me kind of begin to go back in my mind about uh, what subjects or what areas of the curriculum we've talked about and what kind of experts we've had in. And I think I'm right in saying that we haven't really spent a lot of time thinking about um, the part of our curriculum that we call PE, so physical education. We haven't spent a lot of time finding out about people that are experts in, in that particular area of our curriculum, or indeed thinking about what that entails. So that's what the focus is going to be of today's assembly. Now, what I want you to do to kick all of this off in your classes to have a bit of a, a chat around is what does learning look like in PE? When you were doing PE, what is the learning? I think it's perhaps a lot clearer for many of you as to what you are learning and what learning looks like when you're doing your maths or your English or your science or your geography, for example. But it might not be quite so easy for you to pinpoint what learning looks like when you're doing PE. So what I want you to do, pause me, what does learning look like when you're doing PE? And maybe think about all the things that you believe that you have learnt through PE lessons. Go. So, I wonder what each of you said. Well, there, PE is, is a subject that is part of our national curriculum, which is what we do at our school, the, the curriculum that we follow and all children in England follow. And there are, it's kind of split between what happens for our younger pupils, so key stage one, and then our slightly older pupils in key stage two. And when we start with our youngest pupils, the curriculum is really focused on, um, on teaching kind of basic skills, fundamental skills that will then set you up for more kind of involved sporting activities as you get older. So for example, our youngest children will spend time learning skills like um, kind of coordination and negotiating space. So being able to kind of run, turn, change direction, um, skills like jumping and landing safely, skills like throwing and catching a ball, which maybe if you're a bit older sound really quite straightforward, but actually when you're little, you do have to learn them. So all of those skills, running, jumping, throwing, catching, changing direction quickly and controlling your body um, carefully and dealing with negotiating space and all of those things. Those fundamental skills will set you up for some of the kind of team games and activities that you might be lucky enough to be part of when you go into key stage two and when you go actually up to secondary school as well. So that's really, really important. Um, and in key stage two, you continue to develop those skills 
but you then also begin to introduce kind of aspects of how that then relates to particular sporting activities. So you might think about the ideas of striking um, and scoring. Um, so striking will be either, you know, if it's a game involving a bat and a ball, or if it's a game involving using your feet and a ball, so like football, or if it's a game like netball where you're kind of striking by trying to score a goal um, by having the ball in your hands, you know, with those kind of games. So you'll begin to kind of transfer some of those skills into the context of a game, a team game in particular. So when I was looking at this on our school website, which is what I've got here, it says that in our key stage one, we look at athletics. So we look at sort of team races and things within that. We will look at netball skills and hockey skills and football skills, cricket and all of those things. Without actually kind of playing the game as such, you learn the skills that you need for it. And then as you go into years three, four, five and six, you continue to work on those skills like holding a ball, passing, receiving, shooting, controlling, striking with a foot, striking with a bat. So all of those skills begin to kind of build up so that by the time you get further into key stage two and then on to secondary school, you've got all those basic fundamental skills that will allow you to really kind of focus on particular um, games within PE, whether that's netball or hockey or football or, or cricket or whatever that might be. So that's kind of what PE looks like at Stukely Meadows, really learning all those fundamental skills that will set you up for the future. Now, let's think then about experts. So we've talked a little bit about our PE curriculum, so a big shout out to Primary Sports Stars. Thank you, Mr Partridge and all of your team, Mr Hunt um, and Mr Pucky, who comes in to help us, and they work on all those things with us. But of course, we also are lucky enough to have lots of um, PE games and activities that are part of our wider curriculum. So the stuff that we do in clubs and things after school too. Now, what has this got to do with our experts and how are we going to link the expert in? Well, I've got a really good um, way of doing that, everyone. So what I want you to think about now is imagine then that we had an expert. We had... Um, a Harry Kane, we had um, uh, Emma Raducanu for um, tennis, we had, oh not very good on, on cricket, um, somebody help me out, shout at the screen, oh I hope, I hope you've all given me a name, is it Joe Root, I think he's one, and you know think about all those famous sports stars, and imagine that we had them there and we were saying to them, right you're an expert in your particular area of sport, what is the key, what is the key to being successful? What is your expert advice? Well, imagine, what do you think they would say? So as a group, as a class, I want you to pause me now, and I want you to think of what you might imagine the sort of Stukely Six would be from those sporting heroes about what it takes to be an expert in their sport or indeed any sport. Have a think. Okay, did you think of anything? I hope you got your Stukely six. Well, um, I'm hoping I'm gonna be able to come up with six things. But when I was reading up about this and I was watching some interviews um, on YouTube actually with some of the top sports stars and I was doing a little bit of reading about this, there were actually lots of top tips. So I was trying to think of the top six, but what I noticed was a lot of it was not really focused on, on keeping fit and what they kind of did with their bodies so much and you that's really weird isn't it because you think with sport you use your body so much why is that not kind of the top priority now it is important but the focus was not so much on building strength and everything with their body but it was very much about building strength in your mind it was about mindset and that really fascinated me so i'm not sure what you said but what they came up with was one of the most important things was about thinking optimistically now, if you don't know what optimistic means, it means about being hopeful. So rather than thinking, oh, I'm never going to be good enough, oh, I'm never going to be the best, or I'm never going to be able to do that, because it's not always about being the best, it's just about being moving on from where you are. I'm never going to be able to do that, I'm never going to be the best. Think, well, I could be, or I could be, I might not be the best, but I could be better than I am now. 
and it's about being hopeful, always thinking that you can be better and you can do better, being optimistic. So that's the top tip number one. Top tip um, number two that they came up with was, and I'm really trying to remember here as well, the second top tip that they came up with was about um, picking yourself up again. So even though things maybe don't go right, you might have a bit of a setback, you might have actually have a physical injury, or you may not just perform as well in a particular contest um, as well as you would have hoped to have done, and that's what they call a setback. But it doesn't mean, chuck it all in, you're no good. No, a, a professional sports person thinks, okay, I wasn't quite good enough then, what have I got to do to get better? So be resilient, keep on going, don't give up too easily. I think that's the second message. The third message was about really identifying what the, what the, um, what, where you need to get better. Be really specific. So in the areas of your performance that you're not doing so well, what is it in particular that you're not doing well enough? And then what can you do to really focus on that particular aspect? Of development so imagine if it was tennis for example and it was your 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 backhand that was really weak that was letting you down so you'd have to really work on that backhand maneuver and really focus a lot of your practice um, in terms of working on your backhand so find out what it is specifically that is perhaps holding you back and stopping you getting better not necessarily being the best but getting better and really work on that thing. Where have I got up to? Am I up to four? I think I maybe I'm up to four. I've lost track. Oh, help. Anyway, I'm going to keep going. So the um, other thing that they said was make sure that you've got a really good support network around you. Make sure you've got family and friends and coaches, people around you that can help you keep going so they can speak positively to you. So even if you do feel really dejected one day and a bit discouraged, they can say to you, no, come on, you can do this. And, and they help you keep going as well. So that was a really important aspect of um, being successful going forward as well. So with, we're talking about being optimistic, about having the right people around you, about identifying specifically what some of your kind of weak spots are and working on those, um, about being really focused on, on what it is that you're trying to achieve. That was the other thing that they mentioned. Um, there was a whole long list here, and I'm trying to think of the very final thing that they said. I, th um, I think the sixth thing was very much about not only thinking optimistically, but about having really kind of um, high expectations of yourself. So having um, a set of beliefs, so believing that you can always um, do you know do better that you can move on from where you are now and move to the next step along the way so having high expectations and aspiring to being the best that you can possibly be now there are lists and lists of these things but all of that really wasn't so much focused on what you did with your body but was very much focused on what you did with your mind about thinking positively and remaining focused on what it is that you want to achieve now, I think those messages have come through all of our um, experts as well. They've talked about that focus. They've talked about keeping on going, even if you have setbacks. So it's not just sports people that this applies to. So those are expert tips from sports experts about how to be successful in sport, about how to be an expert in sport. So we may not have had an expert but we've had some expert tips. I wonder if any of those things that I've mentioned, you mentioned as well. I'm sure you'll tell me when you see me around school. So there we have it, a very quick run through PE curriculum and a quick think around what it takes to be an expert and what the tips are for success. And here we go into another week. You know what I'm going to say, work hard, be kind everyone. And hopefully next week, I will see you with an expert in tow. Take care. Thank you as ever, Mrs. Stevens. Hopefully we'll have an expert back in the mixer next week. Let's finish up with some birthdays. Hey, 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 it's time to say we've got a stupid birthday. Hey, 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 it's time to say we've got a stupid birthday. Oh, come on! 
We have a birthday, everybody. Yes, we do. Happy birthday to Rhiannon in year five. It's your penultimate birthday. It's Duke for Rhiannon. Crikey. Happy birthday. Have a great day. And I'm um, sure you've done lots of celebrating already. More to come. Okay, let's finish up with EDK. We need a sign, don't we? EDK. How do we do this? I work one out. Tell me when you see me. And we are learning to remember things worth remembering. Learning to remember things worth remembering. Learning to remember things worth remembering. Everyday knowledge for you. And we are learning to remember things worth remembering. Learning to remember things worth remembering. Learning to remember things worth remembering. Everyday knowledge for you. This bit of artwork is by who? Piet Mondrian, a Dutch artist. And what's it called? Composition with red, blue and yellow. Uh, who painted this beautiful picture? Jackson Pollock. And what's it called? Convergence, well done. Oh, let's get um, let's get sciency. Let's get into the uh, solar system. Whew. Here I have my sun, and here I have my planets orbiting. Let's try and line them up to make life easy, like that. Okay, here are our planets. Can you please tell me this planet here? Neptune, that's correct. What about this absolute beast here? That's right, it's Jupiter, the largest in the solar system. What about this little guy here? Mercury, that's right. And can you tell me which number? So let's say this is number one. So this is the sun, and this is number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Can you tell me which number, if that's number one, which number is Earth? That's right, it's number three. And which number is Uranus? That's right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Good work, everyone. Okay, beautiful. Oh, got some, got some flags here. Remember, you're going to tell me the country and then the capital. Okay, here we go. The country is France. The capital city is Paris. Well done. The country is Denmark. Well done. The capital city is Copenhagen. Yes, it is. Oh, here's a tricky one. The country is... Finland, but do we know the capital city? It's Helsinki. And finally, we haven't even got this country on our EDK map yet. No, it's in Europe. Any ideas? Hungary. The country is Hungary. And what is the capital city? It's Budapest. Yes, it is. Top work, people. Oh, 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 we've got some elements from the periodic table. Um, we're going to finish off with some queens and kings. Let's smash through these Ooh, quick as we can. Right. First chemical element. Iron. Well done. Second chemical element. Argon. Pretty good. Potassium. Silicon. Silver. Aluminium. Titanium. Tin.
gold. That's it. And finishing up, talking about our queens and kings. Now, yesterday we talked about the queen now, the queen of the UK right now. Uh, and she is Queen Elizabeth II. Here's Queen Elizabeth II. She's been our queen for 70 years. Now, who was the king 70 years ago? It was her father. That's right. It was King George VI. There he is. So before our queen now, it was our father, King George VI. Now, before King George VI, it was somebody for a very short amount of time. Any ideas who that was? It's King Edward VIII. So before George VI, it was Edward VIII. He was there for a very short amount of time. And before he, before him, any ideas who it was? No, it's King George V. So just as a reminder, we've got Queen Elizabeth now, Queen Elizabeth II. Before Queen Elizabeth II, it was her father, King George VI. Before King George VI, it was King Edward VIII. And before Edward VIII, it was King George V. Lots to remember here, but we're going to become royal experts. Yes, we are. See you next time.